want some volunteers um, to read and we can get started on the lesson. If we have any volunteers that will read. You can just unmute yourself and start reading. Uh, Missionary Smith. Good morning. How many do um, you want me to read? Just two or three or how far do you want me to go, sis? Sister Smothers, can you give her a direction? Missionary Bennett is, is uh, muted. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You can read three. I didn't notice that she was. Okay. Three verses, Missionary Smith, and then we'll pick up from there. Okay. All right. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her promised husband, being a just and righteous man and not wanting to expose her publicly to shame, planned to send her away and divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the children for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do we have another volunteer? Um, Mother Jackson, can you read the, the next four verses, please? Thank you. Good morning. And she shall bring forth the son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall, bring, shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which beginning interpret is, God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, said, Take unto him his wife. Thank you. So, Missionary Bennett, are you, I didn't, are you not talking? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, oh, okay. I just unmuted myself. Yeah, I'm here. So, um, thanks for reading uh, those uh, scriptures. Amen. Um, and our lesson is called Before Birth. And um, to me, I mean, we hear, we hear, we, we, um, we do this, this lesson every time around this year. And it seems like it's always something different. To me, I think it was more focused on Joseph and what type of person Joseph was, what type of man he was, and God knew what type of man he was. And so to me, I was more focused on Joseph because this was not an easy thing for Joseph, being that, you know, he was not the one who was the father and he could not name, because he wasn't the father, of course, I mean, he could name um, name the child, and he 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 was about to like be respectful, but put her away. It's like I'm I don't know about this one, but we know what happened. You know, <laughs> Angel. You know, and and I think sometimes we get in situations where it's like, uh uh, if God don't directly speak to me or something like that, I'm not doing it. You know, sometimes we can get in that that mindset like because some some things we think like uh-uh nope this ain't of god this ain't nothing but the devil but the, the the scripture tells us that he was a just man and he wasn't he wasn't gonna like be um be all loud about it but he was gonna put her away quietly and so um, could anyone else add about like what they, what they found in um, Joseph's character, um, missionary, um, I mean, Deaconess Smothers? Excuse me. Thank you. I agree with everything you said, but you know, Joseph was a man of deep integrity. You know, he was a man that was obedient to God and he followed God, you know, and, 
And that was so important. He, well, he was a descendant of King David. And even though he wasn't the father of, of Jesus Christ, the lead, he wasn't the biological father, he was a legal father. He was willing to do God's will. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even consider it. it, it does, you know, they said, I was looking at something and it said he never spoke. You know, he never said, well, why me? How come? This could have, should have been everybody. He was strictly, um, what do you call it? Focused on obedience. obedience to God's will. And I read somewhere else it said he was, he, his obedience was the key thing that allowed him to do that. Because when God tells you to do something, he sent the angels, he confirmed it, he did all this stuff. And God honored Joseph's integrity. You know, he did. He, you know, he don't care about whether or not, you know, uh, what our status is. Look who he chose. You know, he doesn't care about that kind of stuff. He cares about our integrity, our obedience and our love for him. So for Joseph, you know, I agree with you that this whole lesson sort of centers around Joseph in, in many, many ways. And, and the things that he had to go through, because part of it was, you know, he already had met the three requirements that there were three steps in his marriage. So the families had a key to it. They made they even made a public announcement about it. So, you know, and that they were, you know, and they and they were married. They weren't married and living together, but they were definitely betrothed to one another. They were gonna have to be married. And and it was like he didn't even it just, you know, it, it just proves to me that when you really trust and believe in God, Joseph could have divorced her, he could have had her stoned to death. He was a compassionate man as well. He was a loving, caring, and kind man. You know, he didn't hold any odds against her at all. I mean, never said, it doesn't say anywhere where I've seen where he cussed her out, yelled at her, said, why? None of that. So, you know, Joseph, for me, was, you know, he was the, the key to everything. He was quite a man, I'll say. We don't find men like that today. Amen. And would anyone else like to um, um, speak on um, Joseph's character? Yes. Right. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Yes, I good agree with all has been said, too. But I also believe this, that God prepared Joseph for this. I mean, because in the back of his mind, come on now, y'all know he was going a little bit crazy, okay? About what's going on, how did this happen? But I love how God sent the angel to him. I love how God came and spoke with him himself to let him know that this was of God. So although he was a man of integrity and all of that, he had to have a little bit of help, okay? I mean, a lot of help because a lot of things was going through his mind. He was hurting and he just couldn't believe what was going on. But the angels, God prepared him all for everything. He led him through it all the way. And then it made us think about how he does it for us here today, how he takes our hands, no matter what we're going through. And he takes us and he leads us if we listen. And Joseph had the ear and the mind to listen to God. And so it just teaches me that I have to have that mind and that will to listen to God for his direction and not my way. But yes, it, uh, he was a noble man, but I tell you, without God and the angels, I don't know what Joseph would have did. I think he would have put her away privately like he intended to do. Um, the scripture says that he was going to put her away privately, but that angel did have to come to her and speak I mean, to him and speak to him and to confirm that, hey, um, don't do that. This is, you know, this is what this is what the prophecy said. Uh, Bridget um, said in the in the chat box, he obeyed. He only believed because he was reminded of his lineage, Joseph, the son of David. And so, yes, I mean. Yes, he was he was a he was a man of integrity and all of that. But at the same time, I mean. Yeah, we could say it's a you know God God challenges us too, and we want signs and wonders like Lord. Before I do this, I you know you got to come down and talk to me yourself. Or now nah, this or this is probably not this is probably not from God. But our lesson said Jesus was called before birth, and um, I was on a line last night. I usually go on this Sunday school line, and um, the teacher was saying that kind of like said, like Joseph didn't really have a choice in a way. It was God's sovereignty. And then I asked the question, what about free will? Like our free will, like 
he didn't have a choice um, that he had to do this. And so um, I'm, I'm bringing it out to the class. I mean, do you think he had a choice or he didn't have a choice? I mean, I don't know. I was like, well, God, I mean, we're not puppets and God don't force anything on us. Um, and we, and like um, Deaconess Smother said, he didn't, he didn't complain or anything, you know, because I'm just putting myself in his shoes If something like that, you know, like something that's, we think that's so tough that God gives us. We want to go share with all, everybody, but he did not do that. You know, like, well, I'm going to do God's will, but you know, this and this and that. He didn't say anything. And so I don't know. I was kind of like stuck with that. You know, I mean, Jesus was going to be born. I mean, it was going to happen because God said, you know, Jesus before, before all of this, Jesus said, Father, prepare me a body. You know, they already had the agreement that he was going to come down, you know? And so I don't know. What do you think about that? So Missionary Smith and then First Lady. Good morning, everyone. Um, I believe that he had, he, yes, he had free will. He could have, I believe he could have chosen not to do it. Because uh, like First Lady was saying, he is, he was still human. He, uh, I'm sure the feelings ran through him. You know, this woman is supposed to be my wife and now she's pregnant and I know I didn't do it. So the, the fact that he chose to do God's will it speaks a lot for his character, yes. But I believe, yeah, he has, he had free will. But he, he chose God's will as opposed to his will. First Lady, you are uh, muted. Amen. God bless. I, I, I respect your opinion, but I really don't believe he had a choice. I really believe that God, God had ordained it. And that's what it was going to be. And God has a way of shutting your mouth when your mouth needs to be shut. God has a way of putting you in positions to where you don't have any choice to do. I'm talking about my life, okay? I didn't want to do that, but I had to do it the way the Lord told me to do it because Sheila was talking to me one way. But I, I do, this is what, this, this is what was prophesied. God had already set it up. And I do believe, yes, he's a man and he could have had an attitude, but in every attitude he got, God sent someone there to change him and fix him and put him in the right way. So really, I don't believe he had a choice because this is what was going to be done. And when God said something is going to be done a certain way, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be done his way and not our way. That's just my belief. Anyone else? Oh, um, Missionary Hunter? Um, Missionary Bennett. Oh, there she is. I think I hear. Okay. Missionary Hunter. You guys hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Um, thank you. Um, and good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. I'm just read verse 19, where it says, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. So just looking at um, that scripture where it says he was not willing to me says he had freedom of choice and he made the choice to not be willing. Absolutely. I agree with first lady when God calls it to happen, it's going to happen, but we also have saints and we have sinners. So we know what God has ordained sometimes and in our own flesh, we decide looking at the circumstances. I mean, in Joseph's circumstances, looking at it that way, when he chose to not be willing to make a mockery of her, he chose a life living it on the run, right? And that would put a fear in a lot of people. You can't sleep comfortably in your castle anymore. You can't come home, turn the lights on, decide you're not going to eat the dinner you cooked and call Uber Eats. You literally are just on the run. And the people are looking at you and making decisions about you, prejudging you. I, I mean, I absolutely believe looking at all the circumstances, he, he did have a choice. However, the, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the word to say it, the surety of 
the covering from God, the protection from God, knowing that no one is more powerful than God is what confirmed that choice in his spirit. So yes, it was in his lineage. Um, if God wanted it to happen, it was going to happen. And God clearly said that it was going to happen. And so there's no going back from that. But as a man in his flesh, the scripture says he was not willing to make her um, pub a public example. And so to me, that confirms that he did make a conscious decision not to make her a public example. Amen. And then in the chat, um, Solid Rock uh, host said he knew he he knew he could handle the assignment he chose to do, chose to do. That was in the chat. And so, yes, um, we, I mean, he was human and he was just, and um, as you, as others have said, um, he was not willing to make her um, a public example um, because we knew, we know what, what would have happened to them. He knows his situation, what would have happened. Um, to um, Mary and um, his reputation and everything. And um, like I said, I think it was more focused on him not, not being his child and not being able to name him and not even being able to like touch his wife until after the birth. I mean, that's to me, that spoke volumes of like obedience um, in Joseph's um, character. He was obedient even until all of that, you know, um, and as uh, Deacon and his mother said, we never heard him like talk back and say, well, you know, this is too hard, God, you know, I can't do this or whatever, because the 20th verse said, but while he thought on these things, because he was thinking about this, it said, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. And, and that was just confirmation for him. You know, um, what a blessing, um, because God knows us, you know, we're not super Christians. God knows where we are and God met me us where we are. And he had to confirm that, you know, I always think about what if he, what if the angel didn't appear unto him? You know, I think, um, um, you know, quite, I mean, personally, I think this was a confirmation and if the angel had not appeared to him, it could have went a whole different way. But God, you know, our ways and our thoughts are not like God's. And, and Jesus was going to be born regardless. And so was there anyone else that had yes. any? Sisters, mothers. I have a question. Because in verse 19, it says, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. What does that mean? A just man. Sister Bridget? Um, I was just reading the light on the word. It said Jesus decided to dissolve his engagement with Mary privately. Joseph's just nature demonstrates mercy and compassion. He was compassionate. What made Joseph just was the fact that he was determined to take a different position than that of an ordinary man. Because we know an ordinary man would have divorced her, put her on black, you know, Facebooked her, and all that. Amen. And rightfully so. I mean, it's like the child's not mine, so where the child come from? You know, bringing it down to our 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 day and age, it means he lived by the laws of God. That's what it meant. And uh, Sister Smother still had um, some more. It, it says it means that Joseph was equitable in character and practice. It implies that he was innocent and holy. Being a just mean man means that he lived by the laws of God. So Joseph technically was not a legalistic dude. He obeyed God's laws because he had to, but he also and was just because he was spiritually obeying God's law. He, he believed and trusted God in all things. And so that's what it says here. That's how he that's how a just man is described. So he would describe, you know, it's almost like I don't have no choice, but I do have a choice. But my choice is not my choice. 
if I give my will and my life over to God, I don't have a choice anymore because my all my decisions should be made by God. All my decisions should come from God. They shouldn't be coming from my head. They should be coming from my heart. And so it came from his heart. And so that made him just as well. He just was like, you know what? He, when, when First Lady said he really didn't have a choice, it wasn't, be, it was, I can agree with her that it was because God ordained it, but it was more so because he trusted and believed in the laws of God with all his heart and his soul and his being. And he said, I'm surrendering to you, Lord, and I'm going to do what you say do, no matter what happens in my life. So if this has happened, it has to be ordained by God. You know how we say somebody died and, 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 oh, wow. Why God kill that baby? Because God allows things to happen. And so he took it. I'm sure that he, he, he did some pondering. Y'all, we know that. But I think he took it as, you know, I trust and believe in the spirit of the Lord on high. And I know this is crazy, but I know it's a godly thing because I believe God. So God, I, I believe that when we surrender like that, we, no matter what happens in our life, we just know that God is in control and that he charged it. So I, that's what I believe about Joseph. So he had a choice, but he was choiceless. I, I think it's two things. First lady. Amen. I agree with all I have heard, but this scripture that um, missionary Brent Bennett read about in, in verse 20, this is the verse that really got to my heart. When it says here, she says, but while he thought on these things, all these things he was thinking about now, what he was going to do to her, he said, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Dreams are powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Dreams are very, very powerful. Sometimes I have dreams and I have to say, I rebuke that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes I have to do that. But nevertheless, in Joseph's dreams, it says that Joseph, through the son of David, he says, fear not to take Mary, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, how can you not, you know, if the Lord came to you and said that to you in a dream, how could you not? And by him being the kind of man he was, and we also know that Joseph was a man that was chosen by God to be with Mary because God wouldn't have gave her just anybody. So this is the kind of man that he gave to her. Somebody that will listen to him and somebody that will be obedient to his word. And then it, 21 goes on to say, and then she should bring forth a son and thou should call his name Jesus. For he has saved, for he shall save the people from their sins. My God, if you had a dream like that and God came to you like that. You, I, I don't know about you, but I would have to be obedient because you would know that definitely came from the Lord. So I'm just saying that to say Joseph was a man who loved the Lord with all of his heart. And God was right there sending him everything that he needed to take away all of his doubts and take away all of his fears. Amen. Praise God. And in the 24th verse tells us that um, then, G then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. That was straight obedience. And like you said, yeah, it was a confirmation but uh, the angel appeared to him and told him, like, gave him instructions. This is what's going to happen. You know, don't trip. This is, you know, this is all, this is, all, this is a God thing, you know. And so, you know, that, I mean, we can take comfort in that, that like when God gives us a task and he confirms it e either through someone, through his spirit, you know, by his word, he confirms it. But I, I think for me, uh, you know, a lot of times, if it's a hard task or whatever, I mean, that's where the trust comes in. But it's kind of like, we want to go and confide in somebody like, oh, this is too hard or this or that, you know, but Joseph was quiet about it. And sometimes we, we can't tell everybody 
things that are going on with us and, and what God is doing for us because we don't know how they're going to handle that. We don't know if they're going to go spread certain things or what have you, you know, and so we just have to be careful. And we see here, he didn't complain, he obeyed, you know, and so I just thought it was um, commendable of his character of what type of um, person he was. And that just goes to show how God joined two people together, you know, um, godly couple, you know, what, what, what if one of them wasn't godly, you know, this, this all these type of questions that go on, you, you know, he would have been, uh-uh, what? So, I mean, he had to be obedient. I mean, he's not the only one that was called before birth. I mean, John the Baptist was called before birth, you know, and, and Jesus was born just to die. I mean, what obedience that, 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 that took place because the lesson here shows us that he was, he was hundred percent human, but he was also a hundred percent God. And so, um, that's why when we go through certain things, God knows, because he, he was in the flesh. He, he understands the things that we go through because he, he was in the flesh just like We him. have a hand raised. Okay. Go right ahead. Um, Jermaine, you can unmute. Hello, praise the Lord. Thanks. Um, I would just like to say that, like, I really, I'm really enjoying this, uh, this lesson because I, I really love Joseph. Like this is like, it sounds like me <laughs> a little bit. And um, like, I have this heart and like, I don't know where it comes from and the things I do and stuff like that. I don't know where it comes from. So I, I'm learning from this lesson. It's in you, not on you. You know, it's like God, God created me as a, as a, as a, a baby. And he gave this, this gift to me as a young, as a young. And then for me to hear this is more confirmation of where, I'm actually getting this from, so it's coming from the Lord. It's not just coming from my flesh. So I'm just want to say I'm, I'm thrilled to hear and get clarity from from this lesson. Great, I'm glad. I'm glad um, you're enjoying the lesson. And um, it, I mean, this lesson comes to to personally uh, challenge us to be obedient to God. I mean, don't don't second. I mean, don't second guess God because, um, as you said, uh, Brother Jermaine. I mean, it's in you and not on you. And God knows us. I'm telling you, God knows us. He knows everything about us. And so, and God is not going to put no more on us than we can bear. I mean, that's what I got out of it as well. You know, I think sometimes um, when God gives us a task or an assignment or what have you. And we think it's, we're just so overwhelmed, but God is, God is a just God, you know, to where he's, he's gonna, he's gonna, God gives us the tools to meet the requirements that he asks of us. That's all I'll say about that. You know, he gives us the tools. I think first lady want to say something, our deaconess mothers, would you like Amen. I would like to uh, ask a question. There's a question in the lesson, and the question says, when faced with troubling situation, it says, when faced with troubling situation, why is it right to pause and reflect before re responding? That's to the class. So when we're faced with troubling situations, why is it right to pause and reflect before responding? I'll let everybody answer at one time, okay? Um, uh, Missionary Smith, followed by um, sister, uh, Missionary Hunter. Yeah, well, I think it's good to pause and reflect because depending on the situation, you could be blindsided by something, right? Something, and then you're going to react as opposed to, okay, let's figure out the best way to, to handle the situation, you just react. So it's best to try to just pause and say, what Lord helped me decide the best way to do this, as opposed to going on on your own. Because if you're going on your own, it's not going to come out good. So <laughs> it's not going to come out good at all. So that's, that's the main reason why you should pause and ask God, seek God's help as opposed to your own will, your, your own choices. 
Commissioner Hunter? I followed agree. by Sister Turner. I agree as well. Um, verse 20 says, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee, marry thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Um, a couple things in there, um, when it began with, but while he thought, is basically saying, get out of your own head. Sometimes God gives us things to do or situations come upon us. And I mean, they come with full force. I mean, some things have gone on in the last couple of years, even just focusing on this year with COVID-19. I never thought in a million years that my kids would become COVID-19 positive. I mean, that just slapped me in the face. But when you are in your own head, all you hear is the world. All you see is the news and all they report is deaths. And so when you look at the county you're in, this county's doing bad, that county's doing bad. And then start thinking about, oh my God, I'm not gonna see him. Um, by the way, thank you for your prayers. My kids are home for the first time in a month and a half. I haven't seen them. So we've been spending time together, but God had to tell, the, the angel had to tell Joseph, fear not, which to me, just says there was something going on inside of Joseph that was just like, oh my God, this is happening. It's just so quick. What am I to do? But he stopped. And as he thought about it, he gave God room to send him an angel. So when all of this stuff start falling down, the bills start piling up, the layoffs start coming through, it's important to pause because God always have a word. He always has an angel. He always has a path. And he knew what was going to happen before we knew. And so for this lesson, the summary of it for me is hope. It's like keeping your hope in God and trusting that he's going to protect you always. So that's why I think it's important to stop, get out of your own head and give God room to speak so that all that you have in your head is not what you see on TV, family members, friends, and those who don't have your best interest at heart all the time. Amen. Amen. Um, from Mr. the chat, missionary, oh, um, excuse me, Deaconess Mother, and then uh, Sister Turner. You, you're muted. Thank you. In the chat box, Sister Asia says to the question, I think judgment burns a lot of bridges, which creates a lot of misunderstanding. That's why we shouldn't act. Um, that's her answer to the question. So I just want to make sure that that got in there. I have another question for the class. We have a, a sister Turner who had her hand raised. I don't know oh, if she okay. wants to. Okay. Yeah, okay. just, hi, yeah, just an answer to that question why we should pause. You know, we want God to lead us and guide us in all our directions, you know, in our decisions. So I think praying, you know, is the best thing to do because we don't like making haphazard decisions because they can go, you know, you can do something and make a really bad decision and the repercussions of that can be really bad. I wish I prayed and prayed really hard in some situations, praise God. But I think if we just pause to pray for God's answer, we would do, we would do well. Pastor Simpkin, good morning, sir. You're muted. Okay, did you say me? Yes. Oh, okay. God bless all of you all. Uh, as you can see, I'm at the Solid Rock headquarters, all right. 5970 Thornton Avenue, Newark, California. God bless you all today. <laughs> this is a great question. I and like it's that. one of the things that I think about all the time. And that is, uh, even in the book of Psalms, uh, which will be a part of the message today, it talks about the fact that many, at the end of many of those uh, stanzas, it says, Sila, which means pause and consider pause and consider. It is important for us to understand that when we react, we're much more likely to make mistakes. We're much more likely to look at it from our human perspective or from what we're going through at the time when we deal with that particular thing. But when we respond, we have time to pause and consider and allow God room to see, cause us to see things uh, much more clearly, much more like they really are, or maybe even look from beyond our perspective and look at the perspective of the person who's seeing or doing the thing 
that is causing us a little bit of anxiety. And so it is all, always, I believe, important to stop for a second, even if it's just for a second, before we make the decision to respond or react to respond to whatever that thing is. Yeah. Someone had in the chat chat um, um, think think five before you speak and twelve times before you respond. Um, to Sabani uh, wrote that in the chat. And um, Solid Rock Ho said, we need our steps to be ordered, i.e. Um, directions. And someone put uh, missionary, Lorene put hope thou in God. And yes, that is a good question because we, we uh, I'm personally, I think I could have saved myself a lot of troubles, heartache if I wouldn't have responded so fast because we're, you know, we're in our flesh. And so we have to kind of pray over into the spirit so God could lead and guide us. And I think a lot of times that don't happen. Um, I mean, per personally speaking, and this was a silent obedience. He didn't go and tell everybody about what was going on with his dilemma, because sometimes we, we mess up doing that. You know, some, he had to hold all of this to himself, you know, just for the welfare of his wife. And, and that says a lot, like I said earlier, this, to, this lesson to me was more about the, the character of Joseph and um, how he handled the situation. I mean, because it was not an easy task for him to have, but I just, you know, we, we take pleasure in knowing that he was, he was, it was confirmed. They had to come to that brother in a, in a, in a dream like, hey, this is, this is the son of God. You can be a part of this plan, you know? And so he was like, okay. I mean, he didn't, he didn't go back and forth like uh, Deacon his mother said. He didn't go back and forth. He did what he was told to do. He obeyed. And so that's a blessing. If we can only hear the voice of God and obey, we will really be blessed. And don't act out in our flesh like, oh, uh, uh, I know this is not, but the, it's always the devil when it's, you know, when we're challenged, you know, and sometimes it's not the devil, it's God. And I, like I said, God is not going to put no more on us than we can bear. We have to believe that. We have to stand on his word with that. And even if we don't get a, a sign or whatever, we got to stand on God's word and his promises and walk in the spirit so God could. You know, it says the Holy Ghost will teach us all things. They they linked up together. So we can't go wrong with that. And so is there anything else anyone would like to add? Because we leave space for our pastor. To Mother, uh, Sister Smother still has her hand raised. Okay. I had a question. Um, and this is my question. Why do you think God revealed the truth about Mary's miraculous conception? only privately to Joseph in a dream. Why you think he didn't tell everybody so that she could be vindicated? Because <laughs> not everybody they did this, no. Okay. So it's, it's something. Believe it. I'm just asking. Everybody can answer. <laughs> Nobody's going to believe it. You know, because, simply because when between people get in your business, you get messed up, you know? You can't be telling everybody your business because some people are so jealous and so vengeful. They don't want to see you go nowhere and do nothing. They want to just keep you dead. So you just have to be very careful who you share your dreams with and what you're doing. You know, so that was because everybody had to start getting in his ear. Like, like, like the people who don't really trust God, who don't really, I don't know why you accepting that. I don't know who told you that. You know that's not possible. He would have been hearing, hearing all that negativity. And God did not want that to happen. So that's why he made it so personal. Yeah. Um, missionary Smith. And then Mother, Mother White, were you, were your hand raised, Mother White? Did you want to say something? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to say okay, something sorry, about sorry. what she was saying. It's for, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, because, you know, it's, it's a two-way street. You, you can't keep saying her, her, her. How, what is he going to look like? How he going to make people believe that he didn't do it? You know, it's all about her. She coming up pregnant, but, oh, but I didn't do it. It's going to look bad on him, too, him being a man of God. So it's best to keep your mouth shut. You, if you didn't do it, 
Don't talk about maybe that might have been. Just leave it alone. Amen. Believe God. You know, when anybody come to you in a dream three times, you're going to have to do what he say. And you don't talk about things that, that you didn't have part in because they believe, I would have believed that he had something to do with it. Yeah. If I was going to be gossiping about her, it'd be like, hey, you were there and that's your lady. How we know <laughs> you didn't do it, you know? I'm sorry. A lot to think about. Missionary Smith. <laughs> I think Mother Mother <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, I think she nailed it right there. Right. <laughs> Can't have much else to say about that because <laughs> he could have been, you know. Well, what about you, bro? You know, like you said, that's your lady. You didn't have nothing to do with it. Come on now, just to cover his own tail. So yes, I agree with Mother. Yeah, I believe all that is true, but I also believe that he sent the he, the dream was for. Not just for it so that nobody, you know, everybody don't need to know the business and all that. But Joseph got reassurance through that dream. That's why the Lord came to him like that. And so then he also told him in that dream who the child was going to be. He was told the sex and everything else. So and also that Jesus was going to save his people. Now, could you imagine if, if he had just went blasting everywhere and Joseph had, you know, it had went the other way. So God had his divine purpose for telling him that, but also because it wasn't everybody's business either, like my wife said. <laughs> Who knows what the people would have done? But God had God had his his own reason because he he clarified it. And you know, he took he took he took it back to Isaiah, I think it's seven somewhere in there, where it was prophesied that it was going to be. You know that the savior was going to be born so it was it was kind of like you know there was clarification for joseph in case he had any doubt and joseph needed that he needed that even though he was obedient and going on with the program he needed all those things that's that's what i was missionary bennett um yes yeah, so we're going to put it back into the hands um of pastor so he could um Give us the, his thoughts on the lesson. Amen. Well, once again, good morning to everyone. And uh, it is, uh, this is a powerful lesson. Uh, you know, I've been listening to this lesson uh, since I could remember listening. Amen. Uh, growing up in the church. Uh, but it is important to understand there's a number of things that, that are important here. The one is that Joseph was a just and upright man. He was a man that was wise and he was not one that uh, obviously that just uh, heard something and went blabbing it or heard something and reacted to it. But what happened was when he was told that, uh, that Mary was going, first of all, when he noticed that there was a baby bump, glory to God, when he noticed that something wasn't right, he did not immediately put her away. Because many men, I was going to say most, but many men would have put her away. And it wasn't going to be, no, the Lord put this in here. Yeah, all right. What's his last name? Lord Johnson? What is his last name? Glory to God. And uh, where, he, where is he? Amen. So it's important to understand that he was a just and upright man. So he, he knew the law and he kept the law. Uh, in fact, that's uh, what it talks about in some of the background study. He kept the law. He held tight to the law. And because of that, he stopped for a second. That also meant that he had tremendous love for Mary. Now, remember, he didn't go out and catch Mary like Chase at the party or nothing. That marriage was arranged because that's how they did it. That marriage was arranged. So uh, somebody gave Joseph Mary. All right. And so even with that, he still cared for Mary. He cared for this young lady that was to be his wife. They were engaged. Their engagement was a deeper engagement than we uh, deal with today. But it was much like marriage. But uh, until the marriage ceremony, there would be no, uh, no, no coming together as man and woman. And so it's important to understand that he cared for her and did not want to harm, harm this young lady. All right, because she would have been stoned to death. She would have been stoned to death. Uh, and so it is important for us to understand that Joseph and God knew before the foundation of the world 
Joseph didn't just happen to show up on the scene. When I said that marriage was arranged, it was arranged by God before either of them were born. Before either of them came on the scene. And so he knew how Joseph was going to behave. There was no mystery to God. He knew how Joseph was going to deal with this situation. And so you're right, missionary, uh, missionary uh, Bennett. I do believe that this is very strongly a word to all of us concerning our respect for one another and our care for one another and how we walk uh, with one another, how we interact with one another. Here he is, a just man. And even in the church, uh, glory to God, many times you'll have somebody say something to somebody and they lose it or they walk away or they react to the statement that was made. And you all heard me say many times, how many knew you were right until you found out you were wrong? And so what happened was Joseph pondered this thing. He considered this thing. And in the process, God came and reassured him through an angel. Listen, you need to understand that you have been held in great favor with God. God has entrusted to you the life of the baby Jesus, the coming, the Messiah. All right. And so God had, to, you know, what a unbelievable uh, honor it is that God would allow you to be the male rearing of the Lord Jesus, all right? And so you had to consider that all of your life when we would say, when, when parents would say when I was growing up, you know, go out to the tree and get, get me a switch and bring it back in here. Well, Joseph couldn't say that to Jesus. <laughs> he would have been real nervous, glory to God. So I'm just trying to tell you that this is a powerful lesson as it relates to who we are and how we deal with what God shows us and deal with us. You're right. He could not uh, tell everybody what was going on because the fact is, is that not only was it not everybody's business, and mama, you right, some folks would have immediately said, look what Joseph has done. All right. I don't care how he said this wasn't me. This was the Lord. They would not have accepted that. All right. Wouldn't have accepted it. And even uh, even after they watched Jesus do many miracles, some folks still still didn't believe that he was the Messiah. All right. Uh, and so and we as human beings stop and think about it. How many times has God opened the door and made a way for you that you had nothing to do with? You were concerned about a situation and God turned it around. How many times has God delivered you from a car accident or a deadly situation or a difficult situation? And still, when another one comes up, we start getting nervous. God, is God going to, oh God, you got to heal me, oh God. Well, he's healed you a hundred thousand times and you still worrying about the next one. So that kind of humanity comes into play. And so God had to have a very special man to handle that situation. And he needed only to tell uh, Joseph, of course, and Elizabeth and others as we'll begin to expand the story, uh, uh, that, that there were a couple of other people who were notified of what Jesus, what Mary was doing. But stop and think about Mary as well, because there had to be some human fear. I know my time is running out, but there had to be some human fear in her life because she could have been stoned to death. They could have come and overpowered Joseph no matter what he tried to do and stoned her. And those high priests at that time, particularly the Pharisees, Pharisees were keepers of the law. All right. And I know we talk bad about the Pharisees, but the Pharisees actually had uh, a tremendous responsibility because remember, for 400 years, God had not spoken, given no word to the people. God didn't speak to the people for 400 years. And then Jesus comes. Well, that's, I don't know, five, six generations or whatever it is. And so we have not heard from this. And here you're going to come up with uh, now. The Lord, the Holy Ghost, and put a baby in you? Oh, no. So there was a whole lot of things going on. Amen. And, and thank God today we have the benefit of hindsight, the benefit of what's going on in our study and in our lesson. But those were difficult times for them to be living in, particularly to doing what they did. So, uh, again, he could not tell everybody. Couldn't tell everybody. Glory to God. Yeah, my wife wrote, but God. Absolutely. But God. 
It was only God that can do what he did in that situation and then cause them to be able to maneuver. I don't want to go too far ahead of what we're reading down the road, but to be able to maneuver to get him safe and out of the area, out of the country. Glory to God. Take him to another place where they couldn't find him. Glory to God. And uh, tell those wise men to go back another direction. Amen. All of those things and not go back by the king who was trying to kill them. But it is important for us to understand. God orchestrated this before the foundations of the world. Joseph didn't just happen up on the scene. Mary didn't just happen up on the scene. Glory to God. God had this design because he knew that man would fail him. He knew that by one man, uh, Adam, sin would come into the world. But, and by one man, Christ Jesus, that sin would be delivered. We would be delivered from sin. All right. So it's important for us to understand you right now, those of you who are hearing my voice, you're not here by accident. You just didn't happen to meet somebody who told you about Jesus. You didn't just happen to bring up in the family that made you go to church even when you didn't want to. You didn't just happen to hear on that day the word that pricked your heart. You'd heard it over and over again before that, but that day it ministered to you. It was that God knew exactly where you were. In fact, he knows where you are right now. He knows your frustrations, your difficulties right now. He knows where you are and God has already provided healing and deliverance for you. God bless you.